Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm showing you how to process vocals in FL Studio, although you can follow along in many other softwares. I'll be showing both a simple and an advanced workflow depending on your level, so please do use the timestamps in the video description to find what you need. And let's waste no time and just get right into the tutorial. I also just want to say that all of these vocals are sung by my friend David. I recently flew out to LA to record uh, one of his albums. He's got a couple of projects going on right now. Please do check the description to find out more if you're interested. And I got the chance to record him in a sort of dream studio with a U67 and a wonderful processing chain, but I also recorded him in his home studio and also on an iPhone just for comparison. So that's what all these vocals are here. Piano at the top and then various different vocal takes. We have the home studio at the top, the pro studio in the middle, and then the iPhone at the bottom. So I'll turn those two off. So we're just working with the home studio. And let me quickly go over what the simple technique entails. So it's a two-step process where we're going to clean and balance the vocals and then add creative effects. And it really is very simple and straightforward. The advanced process takes us into some more intricate multi-layered compression and then more parallel processing, which I'll go into in a little bit more detail. It's quite a lot of fun. Starting with the simple technique, I've sent the vocal to track three on my mixer. And the first thing we're going to do is just get a balance, trying to get the vocal at the right level compared to the backing track or piano. from the start but hope set us on fire there's no effects on this yet so some of the words will sound too loud some will sound too quiet but we're aiming for that sort of ballpark what i'd recommend for this as well is take the headphones off turn up your studio monitors if you have them and then set it again with the studio monitors it gives you a completely different image. Now you'll notice I haven't started talking about dBs or the position of the fader because this is something that you just use your ears for. So now that we've got the rough balance, the next step is to clean up this vocal and try to make it sound more natural. What I'd recommend using here is an EQ. So load up Fruity Parametric EQ2 on your mixer or if you have any third party equalizers that you might prefer you can use those for instance i have this ozone eq the first thing i'd recommend doing is going to token one and just adding a high pass so right click type high pass this is just going to roll off some of the low frequencies if you like you can also right click again and change the order to make it a steeper filter just like this usually you can set it between 60 and 100 hertz but just play your audio and take a listen i know it's over so that's far too thin. We're just trying to roll off this low end that we don't need. But hope set us on. That sounds good. The next thing we're going to do is search around for some frequencies that we don't really want. Now you have to be careful because if you do this sort of boost and sweep method that's very common, lots of frequencies are going to sound bad. However, in small untreated rooms like we were recording in, there's often a big build up between about 110 and 180 hertz. So just look for something that's really resonating and sounding bad. Let's take a listen. I know it's over. It was over from the start. I'm hearing something around 150 or 160. So I'm just going to make a small cut there just of a few dB. But I want to make sure that I'm not taking too much warmth out of this vocal. I know it's over. I'm going to quickly swap to the other equalizer I have, this Ozone 9 EQ, just to show you some of the benefits of third party plugins. So, on this EQ, I can actually solo a band of frequencies and take a good listen to what they sound like on their own, which can help you with your ear training to know sort of what you're listening for. So, I'll show you what this sounds like. I know it's over. It was over from the start. So around three, four hundred, it sounds quite sort of nasally. But hope set us on fire. One to two is like where all the detail is. And we fell like lovers. Did. And then the top end of this microphone is really fizzy and harsh. Let's take another listen. I know it's over. It's very detailed in the top end, but it's quite harsh. If I go back to this fruity EQ, we might want to remove some of that nasal quality in the voice around three or four hundred. And we may also want to smooth out some of the top end. But to do this, I'm going to play it along with the piano because we really don't want to do too much EQing in solo. I know it's over. It was over from the start. So I'm just searching around. But hope set us on fire. 
like lovers do. So now we're going on to the next step, which is to add compression. If you look closely at this waveform, you'll see that it's all over the place in terms of peaks and dips. Some words are going to be really loud, some are going to be really quiet. The aim of compression is that the vocal is still going to sound powerful and emotional when David sings louder, but we're just going to prevent too much sound pressure actually getting to the headphones or the speakers. The reason we want to do this is that it just makes the vocal sound more confident, you can hear every word, and also it lets you get a louder final mix as there won't be any loud transients peeking through and forcing your eventual mastering limiter to clip or distort. So I'll load up the fruity limiter and I'm going to put it into compression mode and then I'm going to play in the chorus just for a little bit of variety, it's also a little bit louder and then I'm going to set the threshold ratio, attack, and release, and I'll try to talk through what I'm doing. For a much more detailed video about how to learn and hear compression, please check this link here, or check the description. So I'm lowering the threshold until I'm within the audio, and I'm going to increase the ratio, probably to about two or three to one. This white trace here, shows us where compression is acting and to get the amount of compression you just move your cursor over one point and then you read off the top corner in FL Studio and it says minus 3 dB, minus 6.1 dB. Now I don't set compression by reading a number of decibels, I really just listen to it and set it until it sounds right. This compression is controlling the vocal but it's also clamping down on the words too fast. So now I'm going to set the attack time to be longer which lets the starts of the words through and I'm going to pull the release time back so that the compressor releases and it's going to sound more natural. So let's press play and take another listen. Would we get it right? Find a way to look past the obvious And see the good I tell myself at night So this is where I really want you to listen into the compression. When David sings self at night, you'll see in the clip that he is singing louder, but he's also moving away and towards the microphone, which just makes it move up and down in volume. If I turn the compressor off, you'll hear that those two words really peek through the mix. And see the good I tell myself at night, there's no way. Whereas if I turn it on, they're much more controlled. And see the good I tell myself at night, there's no way. And when setting compression, I would highly recommend using your studio monitors as well. So I'll just do a double check here and make sure that sounds okay. The reason I would use studio monitors is that they give you a much better idea of the actual sort of air pressure coming out of the speakers. And it's something that even the best headphones just simply can't do. Now that we've controlled the dynamics of the vocal, let's go to our second stage of EQ. This is where we're going to make some very gentle boosts and cuts, wide bands, just seeing if we can brighten up the vocal, darken it, really fit it around that piano. Let's take a listen. And see the good I tell myself at night There's no way it could be fixed But I can't help but wonder am I wrong Let's turn all the effects off and take a listen. Would we get it right? Find a way to look past the obvious. And with the effects on. Would we get it right? Find a way to look past the obvious. I think that sounds good. The final part of the vocal cleanup is de-essing, which I don't need to do on this vocal, but if you do, I would recommend downloading a plugin called Nova. It's a free plugin. They have a de-essing preset. This might look very confusing, but I have a detailed tutorial for this plugin as well if you, if you want to watch it. What this does is it listens for those sharp, sibilant, harsh sounds in the high end. When they get too loud, it just turns them down. It does it automatically for you. So if your vocals are really sharp and harsh, I'd highly recommend looking into that technique. So now that we've done the clean and balance stage, we're going to add the creative effects. This could be anything from vocoding, saturation, reverb, delay, all of which, again, I have uh, details, tutorials for how to apply and use those effects in different mix situations. 
for this particular vocal, I think all it needs, honestly, is a dash of reverb, at least in a, in a simple case. So I'm going to use Fruity Reverb 2, but I'm going to add a little bit of a low cut to cut some of the low frequencies away. And I'm going to make sure there's quite a nice long decay time so that the vocal sounds really lush. Let's go back to the verse. I know it's over it was over from the start So that's far too much reverb, let's dial it back in But hope set us on fire And again with these effects you've got to listen in headphones and on your studio monitors if possible Let's take a listen Would we get it right? Find a way to look past the obvious And see the good so that's the simple processing chain finished, and the idea is just to make it fit into the mix. Nothing's too loud, nothing's too quiet, and it sounds reasonably natural. Let's go on to the advanced chain, which follows the same principles to start off with, cleaning, balancing, and then adding effects. However, we're going to go into that balancing section in a lot more detail, and then add all the effects in parallel chains. So let's go back to this track. I'm just going to turn off the reverb and the second EQ. So I'm going to go back to that first limiter and this time what I'm going to do is set a much higher threshold and I'm going to do two stages of compression. So the first stage is going to grab the very highest peaks and just crush them down and then the second stage is going to gently compress everything. The reason we do it in two stages is so that the first stage catches all the loud stuff so that the second compressor won't ever clip or distort. And see the good I tell myself at night Let's go a little bit more And see the good I tell myself at night So if I pause up here, you can see that the loudest words are getting compression, but everything else is not really being touched. Maybe just a, a tiny little bit by the compressor there. Then I'm going to load up another compressor. Now, I wouldn't recommend using the Fruity Limiter. There's so many free compressors that sound better, and most of the third-party paid ones too, but I want to keep this as a stock uh, plugins video. If you want some good free compressors, check out my uh, free plugins video. So again, turning this into compression mode, this time a much lower threshold, a much more gentle ratio of say 2 to 1 or 3 to 1, and then I'm going to adjust the attack time so that the compressor is not cutting off the starts of each word too much. I'm going to go back to the verse and let's take a listen. I know it's over, it was over from the start. Let's make the release a little bit shorter. But hope set us on fire. A little bit more compression. I know it's over, it was over from the start. As I'm adjusting this compressor, I was just pushing the gain of the fader up just to try and balance it, because the compression's obviously taking away quite a lot of gain. I know it's over, it was over from the start. That sounds really good to me, so let's listen to it with that piano as well. I know it's over, it was over from the start. So this isn't really my favorite compressor, but I still think that sounds pretty good. Now at this point, what I would do is start the parallel processing chains. Again, I have a video detailing exactly how to do this, and I actually have a free template, which I'll put in the description, uh, where this is all set up for you. But the basic idea is that whatever effects you think it needs, vocoding, saturation, delay, reverb, parallel compression, you take from your main track here, you go to an empty track, in this case, insert six, you click on this triangle, right click, route to this track, now it's going to send a double of the signal through all of these effects to this track. This is now our reverb channel, so I'm just going to turn it down and add a reverb. Add any reverb you like, I'm just sticking to stock plugins here. Make it 100% wet and no dry signal, and then press play. I know it's over, it was over from the start. So now our reverb is much easier to control and automate because we've set it up on a new channel. It's going to be a little bit more confusing if you're brand new to this, but it gives you a lot more control. Because after the reverb, I can add a ton of EQ, I could add delay, I could compress this reverb again by using the Fruity Limiter. I can do really whatever I want to do to the reverb, and it's not going to affect the original dry vocal signal. I also find it easier to blend in the reverb when it's on its own separate channel. The idea behind this trick again is that you just 
keep routing to new channels whenever you want something. Something that I really would recommend doing is a parallel compression chain. So we've sent a duplicate of the vocal to this uh, track here called Parallel. I'm going to add a compressor. And basically what you do is you just absolutely compress it like mad. You can actually have quite a short attack time in this case. You compress it a ton. Let's take a listen. I know it's over. It was over from the start. So you can see there's just an absolute ton of compression. And then what you do is you just blend this in with the original signal. Let's go to the chorus here. Would we get it right? Find a way to look past the obvious. And I think, depending on what you're listening on, this adds a lot of weight and confidence behind the vocal. And if you can get this sort of parallel compression right, it really makes your track stand out. It just makes the vocal sound really confident without sounding over compressed. So if you're gonna do this sort of compression, you can actually turn the compression off on your dry signal. And again, you can basically just blend the exact amount of compression you want in. A final word about these parallel effects chains is that if you're using effects like reverb and delay, this also makes it really easy to automate the levels of these delays so that you can do delay throws, you can automate the amount of signal going into a delay plugin, for instance, and it just opens up your, your possibilities. So that should give you lots of topics for further study. But what I want to show you now is the difference between the home recording and the studio and the iPhone recording, because this is where things get really interesting. I'm going to just switch straight to the studio microphone. Would we get it right? Find a way to look past the obvious. It sounds so production ready. There's a ton of high end, but it's not too harsh in these headphones at least. Back to the road. Would we get it right? Find a way to look past the obvious. Sounds good on its own, but there's a lot of dynamics, and I'd say the top end sounds quite harsh. And then finally the iPhone. Would we get it right? Find a way to look past the obvious. There's a lot of self-compression going on there, and it sounds okay on its own, doesn't sound great. But what I wanted to show you was that the biggest differences between these three recordings become apparent when you play them in the context of a mix. Let's start with the road. Would we get it right? Find a way to look past the obvious. Studio. Every word is just right there, exactly where you need it. And then the iPhone. Would we get it right? Find a way to look past the obvious. It's just sort of all over the place and doesn't do his singing any good, which is what you'd expect. However, I did want to show that if you throw some reverb and some compression onto the iPhone, it could actually do for like a demo, you know, just for getting a song idea down there. I know it's over. It was over from the start. Okay, I mean, I've definitely heard worse recordings. So my final summary is that no matter what sort of processing you're doing and whether you want to end up doing vocoding or saturation, whether you're, uh, you know, processing for a trap beat or a pop song, I like to separate it into those two stages, cleaning and balancing the vocal and then adding all sorts of crazy creative effects. And usually, if you clean up the vocal and control its dynamics first, it makes doing all of those crazy effects easier because you're usually sort of running into those effects more consistently, which can make them a little bit more predictable. So thank you very much for watching. Thanks again to David for providing all these wonderful vocals for us, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.